Hello, boys and girls. Pearl of Wisdom here from the Pearl of Wisdom show. Picks. VPAL Picks, one of the finest copying apps in the land. Comment in the comment section. I'll let you in for free. You can see all the money to be made for absolute free. I let you in there for a long time so you can see how great it is. Up 126 units in Major League Baseball already this year and uh frolic is going to be amazing so i'd love to see you over there uh today we're going to be looking at so the washington capitals and FanDuel has given their over under for season totals for next year for all the teams in the land and uh we are on our final team the washington capitals we've did all the rest of the Met metropolitan and uh, now it's time to look at the Washington Capitals. Comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think for the over-under. If you don't know, if you're not a better, it's okay. It's okay. It's still lots of valuable information we're going to be giving here. We're going to be looking at analytics for all the players. And my reasoning as to why I pick over or under. First, we'll look at the point total. And then you can tell me. You can... Think about it for a second and comment in the comment section if you would think that they're going to be over or under this total. Let's take a look. This is FanDuel right here, my friends. It's one of the finest in the land, I'll tell you that right now. And they have Washington Capitals over or under 86.5 points. Um, last year, we had... Washington Capitals had 80 points. So they see an improvement, which I find interesting. Um, there's a lot of reasons for that, probably. Uh, they had a lot of injury problems last year. They should be fully healthy coming back this year. Uh, goaltender Kemper was injured. So those are reasons why, some of the reasons why the line could be a little bit higher and uh, maybe they could go over or under. But let's take a look. I want to first look at um, JFresh. JFresh is one of the finest in the land. Uh, as far as analytics are concerned, I use a lot of different sources, but he's my fave. So we're going to be using his analytics. I just also don't like the way it's uh, very well done. As you can tell here, they give you... Uh, even strength offense, even strength defense, uh, goals per 60, assists per 60. And uh, this is a projected war, which would mean wins above replacement. In other words, how many more wins would he? they have? How many more players out there would give you more wins above replacing Tom Wilson? They have him as a second liner, as you can see here, and an above average one at that. But here's an interesting thing, okay? Last year, this is his three-year even strength defense and offense chart. Um, last year, more than likely, and this was another injury, by the way. Wilson was in the lineup for quite a bit of last year. He fell off the map defensively. And that quite often happens when a player comes back from injury. They're not in perfect shape. So they have a tendency, especially with a team that's having struggling with offense players even could be told hey you know what we know you're going to take a dip defensively but let's keep that offense up and he did but his goals per 60 and assists per 60 he's, he's an average offensive player he doesn't really drive offense um he never has he's never been an offensive driver He's the kind of guy that needs somebody to drive off, drive the play, and then he finds a spot, a really good passer, guys like that is what Tom Wilson does. And then we also know that he's a huge man and uh, physical presence, a, a leader, a guy that uh, has his teammates back. A lot of those things don't come up in these analytics, but they do contribute it contribute to. A lot of to the analytics as well if you're a physical person you wear down the other team you're going to probably have a little better analytics that way so it it does it is part of it i love him i think he's great as a second liner maybe he's a little overpaid at 6.5 but for what he brings 
I think he's one heck of a player. So he, of course, would play the right side with um, Evgeny Kuznetsov. And I want to look at him as well. Asked for a trade at the end of the year last year. Um, and that really bothers me because he, he, that means he just does, doesn't realize how bad he was last year. Which shows a lack of character as far as I'm concerned. The, you notice the projected war of 6% as a second liner, meaning just about every other center in the league could replace him that's a second liner. And, and if you watched them last year, that's exactly what it was. Look at his three look at his three-year chart here. This guy in 2020-21 was a very good player. Last year he dipped and or sorry, two years ago he dipped to an average player. Last year he dipped to an absolutely diabolically bad player. He still can make plays. His assists per 60 are actually really good. Penalty killing isn't bad. You can use him as a penalty killer. But at $7.8 million for the next two years, with the, there's no offensive driving. Well, 20, not very. He doesn't drive offense. Um, he's below average. He's been below average on the power play the last two years. And you're going to ask for a trade after this type of a performance? I don't think he's getting better. And I think Washington is in big trouble if he's got to do um, play a major role this year. And I think he does. He's got to wake his buck, butt, butt up, to tell you the honest truth. Like, their season really relies on Evgeny Kuznetsov having a uh, bounce back, bounce back, because it's two years of garbage. Garbage. All right. You know, asking for a trade? Who's going to trade for that? Like, are you... Uh, Sorry, dude. Poor character, my friend. If you don't realize how bad you're playing, then, uh, or trying to pretend it isn't there, I don't know. Uh, Ovechkin, as you can see, is even strength defense ha is terrible. It has been ever since Barry Trotz left. This is a guy who most coaches just say, take the risk, shoot, score. And that's what he does. He's a legend. He's a beast offensively. Um, if ever told to play like when Barry Trotz was there, his defensive analytics were much better. He only needs to be about 30%, 40%, but he's not even doing that right now. He basically is just flying the zone all game trying to score. And we all know why, right? Got to get that record. Got to get that record, um, in which he will get. But his goals per 60, assists per 60, better playmaker than he's given credit for. Of course, incredible power play, incredible finishing. But he is dropping. This used to be 100% war, and every year it just drops a little bit, a little bit. Actually, what am I talking about? Yeah, see, a little bit, a little bit, that's right. Um, love the guy. He'll get, his, uh, he'll get his goals, no doubt about that. But... If you're going to use Kuznetsov in this spot, I don't know, man. It's scary to me. Tell me what you think in the comment section. Anthony Manta. Um, he's not a bad player if he can stay healthy, which he doesn't sell. He seldom does. He gets shit on quite a bit. But in actuality, he's not a bad player. He's, he's, he's actually a fairly solid, even strength defense player played on the third line if you don't play him too high uh, in the lineup. And, uh, you know, he puts up decent offense as well. He's kind of, he, he, he has a play driving side to him. But the problem, as we know, is he can't stay healthy. Do I think he's going to stay healthy this year? I mean, I'm not betting on it. Are you betting on it? Not a bad piece. Um, it was a nice pickup for Verana. I know Verana is, you know, over in St. Louis, but he obviously had a problem probably while he was there. And, uh, you know, I thought they did very well there. Also with Dylan Strong. Remember, I mean, Washington at one time, it was didn't seem like they had, they cared about analytics at all. Because if you looked at the players that they got, they were not strong in that way. But getting a guy like Dylan Strong started to make me think that they're heading a different direction that way. 
as you can see, he's averaged defensively, which um, has been steady for now three years. Um, very good even strength offense for a second liner. He's a well over, he, he's a very underrated player, and I thought it was a great move. And they're going to need him to have a big year this year. He's 26 years old, and he could very well have a big year this year. He could, there's growth here. He hasn't hit his peak yet, I don't believe. Um, and Washington could really use some two-way players. Dylan Strom is one of them. I like him. And so far, so good when you're looking at the top six besides Kuznetsov. Um, what else we got here? We got TJ Oshie, and this is where it starts to fall apart. Um, you got two. TJ Oshie is just getting too old, my friends. Just... And that's the problem with the Washington Capitals, as everybody knows. They're getting old. They're not planning on rebuilding. They just keep on kicking the same cat. And as you can see, his even strength offense has fell off the map last year. Like, this used to be one of the best play drivers in the league. But he's 36 years old. He's had injury issues. And he's just not the guy that he was before. Now, he could pop back here. As you can see, his war is still very high, even though... His even strength defense and offense wasn't based mostly on last year that brought the numbers down. So the question is, does he come back? Even if he could come back half of his, half as much, so he's three quarters of the player he would be. I have my doubts. I have my doubts. He's had some fairly serious injuries. Um, he's not getting any younger, and I think – I, it's difficult for me to even envision him having a full 82-game season. And that's the other thing with Washington. I, it's Yeah, they said they used the excuse that they had a lot of injuries last year, but I don't see how they're not going to have a lot of injuries again. Because Netsov seems like he's out of shape. He's not looking good. Tom Wilson, maybe. Um, but TJ Oshie, I think it's unlikely that he's going to be able to play a full season. Anthony Mantha hasn't been able to do it for a long time now. So that's probably not going to be the case. Which brings us to their depth. Uh, Sonny Milano, that was another one that made you wonder if they were starting to be much more analytically driven. Because Sonny Milano is is, is very good analytically. He's a very, um, as uh, they play in fourth line minutes. Now I think he can play higher than that. From what I understand with Sonny Milano is it took him a while to take conditioning seriously. And that was the main thing that held him back early in his career. And now he's trying to catch up. We'll see if he's able to. But <clears throat> he's not a bad player. I'd like to see what he can do this year higher in the lineup. I hope he comes into camp in amazing shape and is able to help Washington in, the, in at least a third-line role because um, they are going to need it as we continue to see here then we have Nicholas Backstrom, again, injured, injuries, injuries, injuries. And when he was in the lineup, it was looking kind of sad. Yeah. Wasn't driving offense anymore. Hasn't been driving offense. His defensive game has dropped considerably. And... He's just not the player that he ever once was before. Maybe with the full summer, he comes back and uh, you know gets back to a better playing condition because he looked really bad last year. He didn't need analytics to see it. He just watched him and it was like, who's this guy? This is not the guy I remember at all. And I don't see that changing, my friends. So we're getting to the point where you can tell um, – that this is not a great lineup. I could go through the rest. I'm not going to. Uh, Alexi Protus is an average fourth liner, and so is pretty much every other player on here. So you've got Ovechkin, who is just trying to score to get, it seems, doesn't play any defense whatsoever. Evgeny Kuznetsov, who it doesn't seem like he has it in him to play anymore, and wants out of Washington already. But nobody will take him, so that's not going to be fun in the room. Tom Wilson, beast, love him. Anthony Mantha probably gets injured for half the season. 
TJ Oshie, I could see not being playing much more than 50 to 60 games. Nicholas Backstrom, who knows if he can do a full season anymore. Like, you see where I'm going here? Now, on the other side of the ledger, they actually, I think, have a very underrated defense. We'll take a look at a couple, a couple of players that I really, uh, I think it's kind of pooped on quite a bit, and it's unfortunate. One of them is Jensen. How can they not do that? Okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, 33 years old, late bloomer guy. Second pair, 86% even strength defense. That is absolutely fantastic. And he has maintained that for quite a while now. I know, that was a beautiful move. Where did they get Jensen from? I think it was St. Louis, wasn't it? Something like that. Some comment in the comment section, but it was, it was a really nice pickup. And I would say McCrimmon, not McCrimmon, uh, not McCrimmon. General manager of the Washington Capitals. Help me out down there on the bottom. He uh, he actually is a pretty good judge of talent. Um, and, he, and he tries to get the best he can. Uh, and does it pretty good at it. Considering he generally has... He's, trade, he's traded all of his picks away. Or they're picking late in the first round. Or has been for quite some time. But they've been able to pluck players like this. Um, when you look at the rest of their defense... As well, Martin Fahervy, it's a little overrated. That was the other one, Jared Carlson. I mean, I talked to Washington Capitals fans, and they say that they think they would have made the playoffs if they had had John Carlson all year last year. Maybe you're right, um, but I don't see it. Like, I love, I love the guy, don't get me wrong. He's a pure offensive dude that doesn't get enough credit. He actually... Apart from last year, who where he came back from injury, he was a much better defensively than people give him credit for. His even strength defense ran about average, and of course we all already know about his um, awesome offense. He drives offense amazingly well, and all of his offensive skills. But I wanted to show that he's got a couple of years left. Hopefully he can bring his defensive game back again. I wouldn't be surprised if he did, as long as he doesn't get injured. But again, he's 33 years old. This team is hanging by a thread. Um, another nice pickup when we were talking about that is uh, Sandine from Toronto. I was actually really surprised they let him go. But solid offensive player. Um Fell off the map defensively last year, but when we do Toronto, we will see that almost every player fell off the map defensively last year in Toronto. It's like they just thought, didn't care about it all that much. Um, I would like to know what his analytics were just in Washington. I bet would be back higher somewhere in this area here as an average guy. Um, as a second pair, that was a really good move. And you... That's if Washington is going to be better this year, I believe it's going to be this defense that does it for them. We'll look at Fahervy. And we'll look at all of them. Why not? Uh, Fahervy gets a lot. I think he's a little overrated. Um, and might have just had a bad year last year. Look at it. Yeah, no, actually, he improved last year defensively quite a bit. Uh, offensively, he doesn't bring all that much. Um, but, yeah, he's a little overrated. He's probably a third-pair guy, and he gets he gets played a lot up up in the higher line, lineup, higher in the lineup when he probably shouldn't. Um, he is only 23 years old, though. He's got a lot of room to grow. He's got a lot of tools in the toolbox, as they like to say. He still has time to put it all together. I kind of like him, and I think he will put it all together. As you can see... His even strength defense improved greatly last year. So, have another year like that, and you're heading in the right direction to be a great top four. And Washington's heading in a direction of having a pretty solid top four overall. Much better than their offense. See, their defense isn't too bad. Now, Edmondson, I don't really get this one. Although, if he they play him... Lower in the lineup, maybe it'll look a little better. Um, 
He's actually better offensively than he is defensively. Uh, he played second pair last year, and it was not good. It wasn't pretty at all, as you can tell. However, two years ago in 2020-21, he had a solid defensive year. And then he fell off the map. So can he bring it back up again? Maybe Washington believes that they, they saw something with his game that um, they can get it back again. And if they do, and he can be a solid third, fourth pairing, even if it's average, like I said, this this defense doesn't look too bad. Trevor Van Riemsdyk is, I, we won't look at his analytics, but he's an average third liner. So that's not a bad top six. Um, Darcy Kemper is, you know, not a bad goal. He's not a bad number one. He's good enough number one for the defense that they have. And uh, you have Connor McMichael, Malenstein. The only thing bad about for their defense is if there's injuries, you just got Vincent Iorio, really, that's ready. And I think he is very much ready to take over, and he might even win a spot in camp. But when you're looking at it, let's go back at after me saying all of that. As you can tell, I poo pooed on the offense quite a bit. Um, gave a little bit, gave some props to the defense. Actually, we have goal. We have a goalie card here. Why not look at it? Because honestly, goalie card. Kemper. How? What kind of a year did he have last year? He was injured too, so you have to take that. Yeah, actually, his projected WAR was very high. So. Um, He's a solid goaltender. Good enough. I think their defense could save them. I think they're going to have to play a very defensive game, and I just don't see that with Ovechkin there happening too much. And with Kuznetsov and a lot of other guys that are not very good defensively, a lot of, I, I think this team could be in for a disaster, to tell you the honest truth. So if you've given me 86.5 points, I'm going under. In fact, I think Washington could end up being the worst in the East, close to it, with so many other teams doing improving, like Ottawa, Detroit. It'll be between them and Montreal, I believe. Um, unless they can somehow stay healthy, really play a strong defensive system around Kemper, and I don't see that happening. All right, that's my full 42. Thanks for listening in, everybody. I hope you enjoy it. Comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think about this fine programming. I'll be coming on probably with Boston next, and uh, that one should be fun. Very, very fun. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.